There's a new show at Stanek Gallery called Common Thread. It features three terrific artists, painters Barbara Fisher and Christina Weaver, and mixed media artist Agat Bouton. I got a chance to meet and talk to each one of them via FaceTime. Hi, Barbara. Hi, how are you? Good, good. It's exciting to see that you're going to be in this common thread show at the Stanek Gallery. How did somebody from Asheville get connected to Philadelphia? Deborah Fine came to my studio during a studio stroll event when everyone was open here, and I met her then, and she was interested. A happy coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. So I've not actually ever seen the gallery, unfortunately. I would love to come up to the show, but I can't, so. Mm. Were you always an abstract artist? Pretty much, yeah. I was always interested in creating a narrative of an interior life rather than painting what was outside me. Do you know the other two artists? No, but I like both their work a lot. The show is called A Common Thread. Do you see A Common Thread at all? I do, in an interesting way. Christina's work that looks like crumpled paper, and that feels like it could be my work inside out, or hers could be an um, armature over mine. That's what I saw when I looked at that. And Agal, her work with weaving things together is very similar. Did you ever do weaving or any kind of work with fabric? I didn't, but what I used to do is paintings on paper, and then I would tear them up and weave them back together. That's the only kind of tangle weaving thing I've ever done before. Has working on your art helped you emotionally get through th this year, which has been pretty intense? Yes, definitely. If I can stay present, then I won't panic and get crazy about the pandemic. And making art, you have to be present to what you're doing. I can go to yoga or I meditate or try to be present, but it's so much harder than it used to be because we constantly have this undercurrent of fears and unknowns. We can't deny they're with us all the time. So it's definitely been therapeutic. And I don't usually think of my work as therapeutic, but it has been therapeutic this year. And I'm, I work all the time, so definitely helps. These paintings, I work on flat, primed, unstretched canvas. And I use eyedroppers and brushes and pencils and lots of different techniques. And I work flat. About halfway through, I'll stretch it onto a canvas and finish it. One thing people always ask me is, when you started doing it, do you know what it's going to look like? And I never know what it's going to look like. When I first started doing them, I saw them as overhead maps of cities or things you'd see flying over fields. And as I began to work with them more and they got more intricate, they began much more to feel like the inside of your brain or the inner workings of some complicated mechanical thing. So they work on a lot of different levels and people project different things onto them. What are some examples of things that people have said? Well, I've actually had people say, oh, that looks exactly like the inside of my mind feels, you know, <laughs> or people will say it looks like the subway map of New York or reminds me of flying over Vietnam, you know, more often just the entanglements of your life this is going this way, this is going this way, they're all trying to find harmony. You can look at it and see chaos, or you can look at it and see harmony in my paintings. And it's just all projection. They're, they're like Rorschachs. And I have a one series subtle light-colored pieces that I call memory tangles. What it feels like when you're trying to remember something. <laughs> and you, you look at this and you see all these very vague things tangled together, and people can really relate to it in that way. Do you think that people in general could benefit from making some art or doodling even to help them through this, these times? Oh, I think so, yeah. Also, I've been learning Italian, Duolingo, I do, uh, every day. I you know, spend like 10 minutes. And I know other people who are doing that. Pick a project, something that seems kind of silly or small, but that makes you pay attention. I've been doing that every day since April that 10 minutes of Italian every day, so I, I can't really speak, but... <laughs> That's I, great. Hi, Christina, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, how are you? It's nice to, to finally meet you. 
We're both Academy graduates, is that right? That's right. It was 2012 I graduated. When, when did you graduate from Pat? 1980. So where are you now? I am in uh, Western North Carolina. I'm, I'm close to Asheville. I guess you don't know Barbara Fisher. I just figured out that she's down the road. I had no idea. So when when things calm down a little bit, I'm going to have to get in touch, and I'd love to, to meet her in person. What do you think about being in a show with these two other amazing artists? I'm very pleased. Their work is different from mine, and it's fun to try to find all the commonalities. And I was thinking about it, and our processes and visually, the work is very different. But I see layers, contemplation. I see the potential for multiple interpretations in all of the work. I'm thinking about Agat's weavings. There's contradiction in all of our work. Like in Agat, I see a very delicate, ephemeral feel with the materials versus this kind of strong geometry. And then I'm thinking about Barbara's paintings, these tangles that can be read as maps, as these sort of monster creatures, as viscera. And you can see the time element. And in mine, I think too, and I think my work invites multiple interpretations and there's this time element. Yeah, I just like that idea of slowing down a little bit. That's what I do when I paint. And I hope that invites my viewers to slow down a little bit. I've been painting the subjects that you see in this show for the past five or six years. And I keep coming back to these subjects, decorative papers and fabrics and other kind of craft supplies. I use these as my props on my still life stage because they function for me as these pure pieces of color, of texture. I can make them do what I want them to do. They're manipulatable. I can create space with them. Sometimes they stand in for figures or ideas. And so I just find them incredibly versatile. The one behind you, it looks like an iceberg. It looks like a landscape. Yes. As I started painting these subjects, the landscape element wasn't really an intention, but it's certainly something I've taken a run with. I do try to play that up. You know, I was talking about contradiction. Can this piece of tissue paper both be light as air, but heavy as stone, both sky and rock? Do you crumple up the paper, put it on a, a still life table and look at it as you're painting? Yes. The paintings are pretty faithful to what I am seeing in front of me. Do you use natural light or do you ever use colored light? I do both. Like this piece right here, there was direct sunlight on the papers and then I actually hung up a piece of green cellophane in the window that created this green cast in particular. Yeah little piece of paper here. It's usually a combination of both. How has the pandemic affected you? I'm actually painting more than I have in a really long time. This pandemic happened to coincide with my son getting to an age, he's two, where I was really kind of more freed up from him. He has a little more independence. Having my husband at home, and he can watch my son while I work, and we have a very particular schedule that we've stuck to, and we've treated painting like a job. I just dove in this year, and it's actually a very, very selfish way. It's been, it's been kind of wonderful. Why do you think it's selfish? The mass suffering, it's hard to think about my own issues or even your painting problems in relation to what's going on in the world, but it also is, is a way of coping. Before this year, a painting kind of for as far back as I can remember, it's always been a passion, but it's also been burdensome. For me, painting doesn't really come naturally, and it's something I have had to kind of force myself to do. And this year, I can't stop doing it. Oh. It's become my anchor. And that is actually really different and really exciting. Um, and I, I can't say exactly why that is, but some a change happened. How do you pronounce your name? So it's Agat. Agat? Agat, yes. Bouton. Like Agatha oh, yeah. in English. It's exactly the French version of Agatha. Okay. So you've never written any mysteries? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But then, <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Yes, and you? Very well. And before I forget, I want to thank you for sending me the wonderful videos of you working on your art. By the way, where do you live now? Living just outside of Philadelphia, and I've got my studio at home. 
you don't sound like you have much of a Philadelphia accent. I left France 15 years ago, so and I travel the world and live in different countries, Southeast Asia and West Africa and Middle East, so it's not my first time living abroad. And I'm very happy to be here. How has the pandemic affected you? I'm a mother, I've got a family with two children, so I had to, you know, cope with the whole um, uncertainty for the children and being out of school, etc. But for me, personally, as an artist, took that time uh, to explore more things in my work. I was doing long work outside, um, mostly with my dog. But I never stopped working. I always work. And also took some time to work more with social media. I love your Instagram, and I bet Catherine Stanek does too. So I'm very grateful for Catherine to be so active during the lockdown. She sold some of my work during the pandemic. She, she's just amazing. She's really working hard for her team. And uh, that really, I feel sorry, very privileged to be part of an amazing uh, team of artists. What kind of things do people ask you about your work? So usually people are uh, interested by the technique behind the work. I'm a print maker and also mixed media artist. In most of my work, there's an element of print making. Some people are not always aware of print making and how it works. So they're quite um, curious to know about the, the technique and of course the inspiration behind the work too. So what were you thinking when you made the pieces for this show? So in each of my series, I like to tell a story. And in this new series, Second Po, we can translate in English by second scheme. I make a link between my previous series, Habitat and Urban Matter, inspired by architecture, urban landscape here in Philadelphia. And I developed a more intimate work, some small weaving, like fragments of stories and lives. I wanted to go back to my love for craft and made work and textile. I used some pieces of my prints that I slice into fine, thin stripes and wear them together. Then I incorporate fragments of fabrics, threads, and even touches of gold leaves. These works refer to our skin, but also can be seen as a fabric, a clothes, and is inspired by how our skin renew itself and heals itself. The prints and paper I use are delicate and fragile and give a soft and at the same time fragile vision that is our skin. The addition of gold leaves and metallic threads give the impression that our skin is precious and must be protected. In our jobs, daily work, uh, we cut ourselves, burn, bruise, and all this affects our skins and leaf traces, sometimes more visible than other. Do you see commonalities between your work and that of Barbara and Christina? I first seen the work of Christina when I, I was meeting uh, Catherine a while ago and I saw an amazing painting, first of all, beautiful. I really appreciate the work and the technique behind it. She's, uh, yes, so I, when she told me later on that we'll have a show together, I was really happy with that idea. Uh, Barbara, I know mostly of the mapping work she's doing, which is also amazing. And I can definitely see a link between her work and my work. Connection between her work and mine is just fabulous. So I think it's a great combination of three women artists and show is amazing. And come and see it. <laughs> Well, there's no mystery about it. If you want to see some terrific art, head over to the Stanek Gallery. Common Thread will be on display through December 26th, 2020.